Why don't you give us your name and affiliation? I'm Josh Koppelman. I'm a partner at First Round Capital, a seed stage venture capital firm. So before First Round in the 90s, the first rise of this technology bubble in Philadelphia, uh, in the country, you're more on the entrepreneurial side, now on the investment side. Have you seen in that time span a real change in the setting of technology happening? Um, you know, why, if there have been a change? Maybe talk a little bit about that to start. Yeah, well, when I started my first company, I co-founded a company called Infonautics in 91. And when I started that company, it took $5 million to get the first product out the door, just to get the first product ship. Uh, with our second company, Half.com, it took $2.5 million. And with my third company, Turntide, it took 750000 and today, you're routinely seeing companies get started for under $100,000, at least technology companies. So the costs to start a company have come down by well over an order of magnitude because of all types of infrastructure and platforms. Previously, you had to buy commercials to reach your customers. Now you have Facebook and Twitter to reach them. You have completely new platforms like mobile, which has a built-in distribution model. Um, you have monetization that's far more robust through Google and advertising networks. So the cost to start a company has come way down, mm. which has really begun to democratize entrepreneurship. Whereas previously, there was the, the bar to get started in a technology company was so high. Now, you, you have thousands of kids who are starting companies in their dorm rooms. So how would that have made your path you know, in 91 differently? I mean, you did you, you built Infonautics in, in, you know, in the Philadelphia area, so in a non-traditional hub. I mean, was the infrastructure, talent, you know, investment, uh, maybe even technology, was that still exclusively based elsewhere? Or you know, how, would that, how would that change and how would that, might that be different? So I think you're asking about you know, starting a company outside of the, you know, the, the valley versus um, in the valley. And you know, in my view, that it's gotten easier to be an entrepreneur anywhere. Um, it used to be that it was very expensive. The capital was pretty much all on the West Coast. And the access to insight, the access to pe people who had been there and done that were all in the Valley. Um, now you're seeing capital both A, pop up all over the country, but also B, be far more portable. If you look at the last half dozen Philadelphia companies, for example, that have raised venture capital, they've raised it from firms primarily outside of the Philadelphia area, which is a great thing. Um, and you're also seeing that access to sort of the knowledge of starting a company has spread through, whether it's through blogs, whether it's through Hacker News, whether it's through the internet, Twitter, the, the, the sort of, the, 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 the things that people need to know when starting companies no longer are just contained in a few small gatekeepers in one area. That said, there might be certain advantages to scale and grow companies in ecosystems which have high access to talented um, people, talented, experienced people, uh, but, the, but those, those advantages are diminishing. So when you sit with an entrepreneur and he or she's from Kansas City or Chicago or Baltimore or Philadelphia or Las Vegas, or does geography even enter into your conversation of understanding the company and its viability? Do we pay attention to geography? Sure. We pay attention to a lot of things. We look, we're assessing the founder. We're assessing the idea. We're assessing the market there. And we're also looking at their geography. Is this a geography where they have access to their customers? If they're an ad tech company, maybe they should be in New York if they're, if they're selling to ad agencies. So we, we, you know, we factor in geography as, as trying to figure out what is it going to take for this company to win? in terms of team, in terms of founders, in terms of ideas, and in terms of location. Do you think a geography that is not New York or the Valley ever is an advantage for a company? You know, is that ever come into your mind in that way? There are, there, there are times where being outside of the ecosystem could be an advantage. I think if you're a serial entrepreneur and you're trying to hire and build a team outside, you know, so, you, so when I was starting Half.com here, mm. for example, I had previously taken my first company in Phonautics Public. So I had a track record and I had a reputation and my ability to sort of create attention and attract interest and maybe hire the best and the brightest here was very different 
than if I was one of 5,000 entrepreneurs doing it in the Valley. Is this good for our country, right? Like you can make the argument that a real dense pocket of the Valley is, is maybe great for the country. Is it being more diffuse valuable? So would you, do you think having community theaters in every city across the country is valuable? Um, one could argue that every actor should move to Hollywood. Um, but I think there really is value in having the arts in every city. And, and while Philadelphia is not Hollywood or Broadway, Philadelphia, for example, has the Kimmel Theater, the Forest Theater, the Walnut Street Theater, the Arden Theater. And, and I think that's a good thing. And I, so, so I think that you've seen that great entrepreneurs could come up with great ideas anywhere. Mm. And just like all great actors aren't born in Hollywood, all great entrepreneurs are not born in the Silicon Valley. Now, some of them choose to move there and we have an office there and I understand why and it makes, and a lot of times it makes sense to, to, to build a business there. So I'm not saying that, I'm not anti-Silicon Valley by any stretch, um, you know, but I also understand that great entrepreneurs could have great ideas and build great companies in other places as well. How does the global conversation happen, right? Like we're, we're seeing the technology, you know, we're seeing the Israel conversations in Berlin. Are you following that? Is that, is that impact how the non-traditional tech hub growth in the country looks? So for us, it doesn't really impact the non-traditional tech hub area, but we do follow the internationalization of technologies. Specifically, it's forcing companies to deal with internationalization earlier. It used to be that you could launch in the US, refine your model in the US, prove your model in the US, and scale your model in the US, and then consider expanding to Brazil, China, India, Germany, the, EU. Um, today, because of the, the pace of communication and of change and the rise of the copycats, um, companies have less time to build something in the US before they're forced to deal with internationalizing their product or concept. 